All right, I have an iPad Pro here with a charging problem, and the guy wanted me to make a video on it. And uh, I don't normally do this kind of stuff because I make I just make videos when the time warrants and um, if it's something new, generally. Um, anyways, but I'm in a giving mood, so I'm going to try to oblige. Um, so long as it doesn't take me too long, <sighs> we'll see. Problem is, sometimes I make these videos too, and it takes like 15 minutes to do this repair, and then the customer says, What the hell? I'm paying them this much money to fix this, and it takes 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, so that's another reason. Um, and, and then they'll never send us anything ever again. <laughs> um, Anyways, okay, so I've already disassembled the screen. Um, the battery's still connected. First thing I do is, well, first thing I did was I just plugged it into the to the charge port, and uh, let's see. Well, I don't have my ammeter hooked up. I do have it hooked up, but you can't see it. So you'll have to trust me. Uh, but it's basically 0.6 amps on the ammeter. And um, constant 0 0.6. He says it gets a little bit hot in the middle here, and I feel getting a little bit warm. Um, so next thing I do is I'll plug in my trusty TriStar tester here, and and then I will. It says device connected, so I'll just do the test real quick. This part takes a little bit longer. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but that's upside down. Anyways, you have to trust me on that too. So, trust our tester. I've already done this, so I'm gonna just quit it right here. But basically, it's gonna say everything's passed. Tristar is passed. Uh, battery not detected. But I've got a lot, a lot of false positives on the battery uh, not being not connected. So that's not. I don't think that's really an issue. So let's just ignore that for now and then we'll we'll see what happens okay so I'm gonna just take the now I'm gonna disconnect the battery and you don't really have to disconnect a battery um, when you take the screen off it's mainly when you put it back on that's when power is still applied to the connector here and that's when you're gonna short out the, the touch filters and the or and or the backlight filter. usually the touch filters All right, so we are almost there, maybe. All right, so you always want to isolate the battery. Uh, the battery. Um, we used to use these things, but these things don't really work anymore because they made these. They made the connectors really, really tight. So you have to use. We use this. We just cut out some union repair plastic cards that they give us, and we just pop it in like that. So it's got to be super thin. Playing cards probably not hard enough. All right, so let's go under the scope and take a look. Well, I don't really see anything super noticeable, um, but. Let's uh, start diode moding a little bit. See what happens. All right. So let's take a look under. I feel like this is not bright enough, but anyways, we'll see how it goes. So I don't think it's a VDD main short because I'm still getting power. Um, but let's see if I get to get this thing to focus a little bit better.
maybe that's all right all right we'll leave it like that okay so in order to check VDD main you want to def definitely make sure the battery is disconnected and then I just go here uh, this is the backlight filter right here and I already know that so this is 0.15 and 0.15 so that's not that's not right it should be 0.3 I believe yeah and, and then if I do it if I do it here and here this is shorted this is a direct short to ground here so and this is the touch filter right so if you want to like kind of diagnose this a little bit better then we can go into ZXW tools and take a look uh, see where these see where these lead but I think it's um I think it's V I think it is VCC main actually but anyways to confirm let's go to the ZXW tools alright so let's go to ZXW tools okay so I'm in iPhone 10s right now let's go to iPad uh, let's go to iPad Pro 12.9 2015. So, let's see. Let's go down to the connector. Where are we? Oh, it's down here. Okay. So let's just see where all these things lead. Um, so this is the touch filter right here. These are the backlight filters. Uh, let's see. So these go to two coils, the touch coils. So let's see, touch coils. touch coils down here and then you have I guess some caps here it looks like this is a cap or actually this is a cap this is probably a diode and then this is the backlight right yeah this is the backlight system I believe yeah <sighs> okay so definitely most likely <laughs> definitely most likely a VDD main short um, question is where is the VDD main short okay so based on experience um, for an iPad Pro 10 or 12.9, if it's a VDD main short, then it's almost always it is almost always one of these caps right here, right? So we will. But the weird thing is that it's actually drawing 0.6 amps on the ammeter, so I don't really see any blown cap here. Um, and you know what? The weird thing is, I do remember that there's actually like uh, I've had a few instances where actually one of the caps over here uh, were blown, was blown. So let's just see if we can dive into this a little bit and see if maybe we can get some more clues. So this is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Point five. Okay, so it doesn't look like anything's blown around here, but I think I I've also had some this this thing blow as well. Um, but let's just confirm the confirm the short, and that is grounded, and that is also grounded. So those should not be both ground. And I don't really see anything over here that's kind of messed up. So my guess is that it's probably going to be one of these caps here. All right. Um, mm, yeah, most likely, I would probably say most likely one of these caps. So let's just confirm real quick uh, by just kind of testing some of these caps around here. So we'll just go with uh, this one right here. Sure enough, it's zero, and that side is zero. Okay, so we're just going to cut to the chase and we will diode mode, uh, I'm sorry, we'll free spray it and uh, just want to take a second look and make sure I'm not missing anything but sometimes you can see, oh here it is right here there's your burnt cap right there, see it? 
Yep. See how it was like kind of cracked, a little bit brown. Uh, so that's good. <laughs> we don't have to do much. We can just pop that sucker off, and then it should we should be back in business. All right. Oh, you can't even see it. I put it on the small screen. All right. So I'll show it to you again. All right. You can you can't really see it very well. Um, but if I zoom in a little bit, and you kind of know what to load look at. Um, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Maybe be a little bit better. You see how like this cat? I mean, you can't see it that good from the from the scope camera here. But um, this is a good cap. This is a bad cap. And you can see like the end is a little bit kind of burnt a little bit. It's, it's kind of chipped. And if you know if you kind of scale out a little bit and kind of just look, you have to look somewhat closely. But you'll notice that this cap right here is just a little bit off versus the other ones that are similar to it. Okay, so. Um, I don't even use heat for these things. I just pop them off, and and then we can confirm. Okay, uh, but I'm pretty certain that this is the issue. So let's just we can diode mode it and just make sure if there's con caps or not supposed to show continuity across them. Okay, if there's continuity across them, then they're bad. Okay, so I'm I have my leads here and it is showing a dead short. Okay, across this cap, so that means it's bad, and then. So to confirm that we've fixed this thing, uh, we can just check both sides of this and make sure that we're getting the correct reading. And we're getting zero, which is ground, which is correct. And then on this side, we're getting 0.161. So basically, every capacitor in this line, you know, when I say in this line, I mean that every capacitor that's connected to this point right here, which is shown in red in ZXW tools, is is on that power line. All right. Um, and you you have to in order to understand that you have to kind of understand circuits a little bit better okay um, and essentially this is every component that is in uh, parallel um, is that right I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be in parallel it could also be in series but every every component that's connected to this power line if that makes any sense and the power line is VDD mate, all right. Um, and this is every component and every point that is connected to that line. So when one component is shorted to ground, that means every other component is going to show shorted to ground. Uh, I'm not doing a great job at explaining this, but um, so as you can see here, this is the cap right here. We removed it and now, once we test it again, the, the line is no longer short. The, the total line is no longer short. Okay, so we're just going to go back here and make sure that this, these are the backlight filters. We're going to go back here and make sure that uh, we're getting a point three, which you know almost certainly we will be. So we'll just go back. We will test it again. So, so now it's showing point three one, point three one, and then this one is point one six. Okay, so that is correct. So we're just going to throw this cap away. And then we're going to put the screen back on, reconnect the battery, test it, and then uh, you'll see the, that's where the magic will happen. Screen here. I've got too many tools here. Alright, removed this thing, which is the battery isolator, then I'm just going to go ahead and put the battery screw back in, and we will plug it in, and hopefully it'll show the charging symbol. There you go, Apple will go. So it just happens, I'm just going to uh, add a caveat here <laughs> for those watching and saying, oh man, it took him 15 minutes to repair this thing. Well, it just happens to be that this is a 15 minute repair, but um, you know, obviously our prices are based off of average average time to repair. <laughs> so uh, 
Anyways, and and if you didn't, if you've never done this before, and you're, I guess I'm trying to justify um, what we're doing here, you know, <laughs> and uh, just understand that you know we spent a lot of time learning this um, to do it more efficiently, which is why we're able to do it in 15 minutes. Um, so. It's like bring it, bringing something to a mechanic, and the mechanic tells you in, in you know two seconds what the issue is. You know, and it's because they have experience doing it. Anyways, I don't really need to justify what I'm doing here. Um, I just you know, and we don't normally tell the customer this, you know, but sometimes they probably think that oh man, it was just it was just this it was so easy. It was, it's a two dollar part, and whatever. It took them ten minutes to do, but you know, that's not necessarily always true. You know, and and you're not really taking into account the the um, the learning curve, you know how how long it took us to actually get to this point. So I just hope people see that and appreciate it. And um, so I'm not so basically I'm gonna say that this thing is is done here. Um, I have the passcode here, so I'll just kind of plug it in. It's charging at a full two and a half amps here, and I'll plug the passcode in. But I'm pretty certain everything's gonna work. So I'm just gonna put everything back together and. Uh, we should be able to call this one a day. So, uh, so this is a what 16-minute video here. Um, what you didn't see was that it took me two hours to, to disassemble the screen. So, if you want to justify uh, um, how long it took, anyways, <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. And um, yeah, all right. Well, thanks for watching. Bye. I just wanted to say thank you for watching our videos on YouTube. Um, you know, when I started micro soldering about three or four years ago, probably about three years ago, um, I started because I ended up breaking someone's phone during a repair. Yeah, this was back in the days of the iPhone 5C, and as I was disconnecting the battery, I accidentally pried off one of the little components next to the battery connector. So my options were to try to try to fix it or to buy buy the customer a new phone and and that's kind of what started this journey well fast forward three years later um, we have a website now microsoldering.com and we also have an online training course um, it's ninety nine ninety nine if you buy it through our website and we go over just about everything that you need to know to get started on your micro soldering journey um, it's uh, kind of sectioned out into about four parts and uh, the first part we just kind of go over all the basics and tools how to use diode mode um, and what kind of tools and equipment to buy and stuff like that the second part we talk a little bit about ZXW tools and in the third part we go over four of the most common repairs something like this should be four common most so it's basically no touch no backlight no power and we just added a section for audio IC on the iPhone 7 and 7 plus and then the last part is data recovery no boot and just kind of a very basic um, uh, discussion about data recovery so if you want to buy it just go to microsoldering.com click on store shop and then you'll come to this um, this uh, page right here just click on buy at Udemy and that'll take you to Udemy where our course is hosted um, and you can even preview some videos of the course and see if you like it or not and right now it's we're at four and a half hours and we're adding to it um, as much as we can so uh, just make sure you go through our website otherwise the cost is a little bit higher alright thanks for watching